Over to another leadership race now. The search for the new head of the federal Conservatives continues as the candidates gear up for yet another debate, this time in French in Montreal later this week. Roman Babber will be on that stage. I spoke to him about his pitch to become the leader. Mr. Babber, nice to see you. Good to be with you. I, I want to start a little bit with the tone of the race, if I can, because I think this week it, it, it you know, maybe even got more divisive, uh, particularly around uh, the, the shooting that happened in Buffalo, New York, a week ago with Patrick Brown calling on Pierre Poiliev to condemn uh, the, the shooting and, and call it racist. Mr. Poiliev calling Mr. Brown sleazy for calling him out on that. So, I mean, that's just a, a sampling of what happened this week. And I wonder if, if that concerns you, that some of the attacks are turning quite personal and that the tone overall may reflect badly on, on the party. Look, first of all, we have to express our condolences to, to the families of, of victims uh, of Buffalo shooting and uh, clearly disavow um, the theory that uh, one race wants to wipe out another. I, I think it's hate speech and it's probably unlawful. But I think uh, it's important that we uh, maintain good demeanor in this race um, without the personal attacks. And, and I should not be speaking for other candidates. Uh, I, I think there are a lot of uh, good ideas uh, and important issues raised uh, in the conservative leadership race to date. Um, I'm talking about restoring Canada's democracy with it being at risk. We're talking about equalization, supply management, the cost of living. Uh, and we should avoid the pitfalls uh, of the radical left uh, that loves to peddle uh, division. Uh, Canadians, I think, are welcoming people. Uh, we should condemn racism, but stop weaponizing it as a political tool and focus on the issues. Yeah, it, it, I'm not sure it's the radical left that, that's that's fanning this. It sounds like it's just happening inside the, the party. And, and I wonder, like, are you concerned that Canadians are watching some of that? And, and I realize I'm, I'm not talking specifically about you, but that they're watching it and they are coming up with ideas about the Conservative Party that, that are, are not accurate. Well, look, I've, I've tried to maintain a, a positive uh, demeanor throughout this race. Uh, I try not to. And in fact, I don't believe to date I've attacked any of my friends. Yeah. Uh, as I've said, I think every single one of them uh, would make a prime minister than better prime minister than Justin Trudeau. Uh, at the same time, I think it's impossible. It's important that we come out of this race united and yeah. that under no circumstances do we uh, damage a candidate irreparably so they're unable yeah. to contest a general election. I want to talk to you about a couple of your, your policy ideas, if I can. One of them is um, ending equalization payments in this country. That's, of course, the, the money that the federal government doles out to make sure that services are delivered in an equal way uh, across the country, regardless of, of what kind of resources the province ha has the ability to, to raise. H how would you do that? Are you proposing to remove the principle of equalization from the Constitution? Or is, is that the starting point? Or what is it? So first of all, I will phase out equalization. It can happen on day one, uh, but I will accomplish it before the end of my first term. I'm not satisfied that provinces are unable to maintain the same degree of services uh, without equalization. And if we determine at the outset of my first term that they're unable to, then I would propose to work towards a way to enable them to do so. And namely, we should unleash their economic uh, opportunity and potential. And I will do so by unleashing uh, their natural resources potential. I would like to make Canada into the natural resources superpower that we ought to be. Okay, so so ju just to go back though to the actual the question, would it be so or over time? I get that part. I don't think you could do it in one foul swoop either. But would you, do you? Are you planning on reopening the constitution in order to do that? I'm not planning on reopening the constitution. I, I'm not sure that it would be necessary to reopen the constitution. We would have to see whether, in fact, we're able to meet uh, the standard or, or the test articulated in the constitution and the various nuances therein. But look, I, I'm running against socialism in Canada, and I do not wish to continue Canadian this dependency by province on another province. Okay. I think that most Canadians would rather be independent, and, and we need to empower them not to depend on other provinces. Okay, but what, what would you do, for instance, in the case of PEI, Trevor, Trevor Toome, he's a well-known Canadian economy, economist, says that to make up the difference between what PEI gets in equalization payments and their ability to provide services, they would need to charge a 30 percent HST. They, they don't have a bunch of resources. They're not sitting on a bunch of resources. So what would you tell PEI to do, for instance? 
Well, we saw, for instance, next door in Atlantic Canada, Newfoundland and Labrador used to receive equalization and then uh, got into the oil and gas industry and, and are now actually paying into equalization. And I see no reason why PEI cannot do the same. EI to date has uh, explored approximately 20% of its natural gas resources, and I would like to get it up to 50 to 80% uh, over the next decade or two. On the issue of public health, you, you've said this week that you would fire Canada's chief public health officer, Dr. Tam, uh, for her handling of the pandemic. You obviously, it's widely known that you disagree with many of the measures that were put in place. I wonder, though, whether Dr. Tam is the person to go after. What Dr. Tam provided uh, advice to the government and evidence to the government, and the government made the decision. So, so why would Dr. Tam be the target of your frustration? Well, it's, it's not frustration, it's the object failure of our pandemic response, namely that it appears that the, the, the response itself may have been considerably worse than initially thought, and that was the prevalence of my argument. COVID is a very serious infection, but that doesn't mean that we should not look at the collateral harm of lockdowns and other public health measures. And, and look, the government has always been acting on advice from the chief medical officer. That's what it's predicated its actions on. And, and we're seeing the fruits to bear. We're seeing a mental health catastrophe uh, gripping our country. We know that our children have regressed considerably. We know that according to the Canadian Medical Association that already more than 4,000 Canadians lost their lives because of surgeries yeah. delayed. We have an almost doubling in the rate of deaths from uh, overdose. Uh, in Ontario alone, we have more than a million cancer screenings. Yeah, I, I, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone is denying the the side effects of lockdowns. Um, but I, I think you would agree, I, I would hope you would agree, that the tens of thousands of Canadians who died from COVID uh, is also a tragedy and could have been worse yes. if the lockdowns had not been in effect. Well, no, I'm not. If, if we're here to relitigate lockdowns again, first of all, I welcome you acknowledging the collateral harm of lockdowns. That is something that, that wasn't permissible to even discuss when I discussed it first in yeah. January 2021. Yeah. But the jury is still out on whether there's any efficacy to lockdown. We're still seeing a lockdown in some parts of China, uh, sixth or seventh or tenth lockdown. Uh, what, what I suggest is that we should have focused our response on the vulnerable. We know that 80% of the risk was in long-term care homes and congregate yeah. settings. Yeah. Uh, we know that the virus is very, very transmissible. And I'm not sure that it made sense to lock up 37 million Canadians and make themselves sick. There's nothing wrong with demanding accountability from our public health officials or questioning them. You, are you, there's a French debate later this week. Do you speak French? Are you going to be able to participate? I, I have some very, very basic elementary French skills. Uh, I, I know that I need to improve them. That's why I wake up every morning at 7 a.m. for a French lesson. I'm going to participate and, and I am look, for, look forward to doing well. Okay, Mr. Babber, good of you to make the time today. Thank you, sir. Good to be with you.